A new report out moments ago is warning Canadians about the impact climate change has on personal health. According to the medical journal The Lancet, more than 7,000 Canadians died in 2015 alone due to chronic exposure to air pollution. And that's not the only finding. The report says the warming atmosphere is increasing the risk of heat stroke, gastrointestinal illness, birth defects, Lyme disease, PTSD and suicide. It also found Canada is not doing its fair share to slash emissions. And this country is particularly at risk because it's home to some of the most rapid warming areas in the world. So what is the report calling on governments to do? Dr. Courtney Howard is a co-author of this report and she is an emergency room doctor who works in Yellowknife. Hi Dr. Howard. Hello. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you and nice to have you on the show. Can you, can you lay out, I mean we, we went over some of the findings of the report, but how did you reach the conclusion, the big conclusion that climate change is affecting our own health? So that's something that the Lancet's been saying since about 2009. So that's when they call climate change the biggest public health threat of the 21st century. And the World Health Organization actually now says that. Um, in 2015, the Lancet came back with another report that pointed out that there's lots of things that we can do to decrease greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution at the same time. So things that will improve health now as well as decrease greenhouse gas emissions. And so they call tackling climate change the biggest health opportunity of the 21st century as well. So this particular report, uh, so it's sort of a, a a giant project um, that you can think of as sort of a wheel with different spokes. So in the middle is this huge data-driven report, uh, 24 universities from around the world, and they monitor 41 indicators every single year. So it's sort of like a report card for health for the world every year. And then in order to help us figure out what to do about that, they give some of the data for the different countries to uh, people like me in those countries to try to place in the policy context so we can make recommendations for people. So what is the Canadian context to what you study? So the Canadian context, so you know, just in terms of uh, health impacts here in, in Canada that we know about, so I live in the north and you know, part of my patient population is already experiencing temperatures three degrees Celsius warmer than it was, than they were in the 1950s. So that causes the ice roads to be less stable, it makes it more difficult for people to hunt, so there's reductions in food security, it's tough for people to stay connected. The environment just looks different, so that gives people a sad feeling of feeling homesick when they're still at home because there's permafrost slums that look like landslides. Across Canada, we've seen you know wildfires in uh, BC and Alberta that have blanketed entire provinces in smoke, led to respiratory disease, asthma exacerbations, uh, and also a, a real feeling of um, sadness we found when people are blanketed in that smoke. It's almost like the SAD that we get when when the weather's not good in the winter time. We had droughts across the prairies, 90 heat-related deaths in Quebec this last year, the tornado touching down tornadoes in um, Ontario, and then also um, in flooding in New Brunswick. So. The things that we've we've seen worldwide and that the, the Lancet report shows are happening worldwide are also happening here in Canada. Um, specifically here in Canada, they were looking also at heat-related deaths. So they've shown that the temperature experienced by humans in the summertime here has gone up by about 0.2 degrees Celsius um, in just the very recent last past. Forgive my ignorance, but in a lot of the things you mentioned, um, how do you isolate the the causal nature of the like is it is it because of climate change that people are having these impacts or is it a factor or is it related like what is the specific relationship and is it are you able to actually say that a is causing b so for a lot of these things there's different factors sort of you can think about it on a bell curve and climate change is something that is moving the bell curve along so it's making the whole thing more likely so we know that extreme wildfires are definitely being made more more likely by climate change and so it's no surprise that we're seeing such increases um, you know in the last few years in Canada we know that it's getting hotter as we've seen with all these record-breaking years so it's no surprise that we're seeing you know these heat waves in in Canada so sometimes you can't say in real time okay this heat wave is due to climate change, but we can certainly say we know we are going to have more heat waves. And so, you know, we need to get prepared for that and we need to acknowledge that, okay, so not only do we practically need to figure out how to have the best epidemiologic surveillance systems for that, not only do we have to create great public health messaging to protect our vulnerable populations and make sure they can seek cool air shelters and you know have support for people to go check on them and make sure they're drinking enough water so they don't get kidney disease. But we also need to reduce ambitions so that we can stay within a realm of temperature increase that we can still adapt to because where we're heading is a place we probably aren't going to be able to adapt to very well. On the issue of emissions, the report talks about and is supportive of carbon pricing. Uh, there's a report out from the UN yesterday that said that at current car carbon pricing levels and the current actions taken by this government, they still won't meet the 2030 targets, which even the UN now says are, are not ambitious enough. What is your recommendation to government based on what you found? 
So The Lancet, um, it's a multidisciplinary group that puts this together. So there's doctors and economists and financial planners and engineers and everyone you could think of. And so they looked at what's happening in climate change in each one of their disciplines and what the best tools are. And so they've been saying since 2015 that a strong, predictable, broadly applied price on carbon that ratchets up in a really predictable way from year to year so that people can make decisions based on what they know is going to happen. So maybe the hybrid car is more expensive than the regular car now, but if you can see that the carbon price is gonna go up, it will actually end up being cheaper for you in the long run to buy that hybrid car. That's the kind of thing that will drive policy change. So certainly- How much does it need to go up though? Well, More depends, than the government has planned here? It depends on what the basket of policy options is. So really, this is a sort of, uh, we need to take action on many fronts right now and not sort of put all of our eggs in one basket. So that's why things like energy efficiency are really important. That's why things like coal phase out are really important. That's why things like, uh, active transport, so moving to um, more support for people getting to where they need to go on on foot and by bike are really important. So um, there's many things we need to do, but certainly carbon pricing is the number one most effective thing. And so it's great that we're applying it, uh, you know, that there's a federal plan to apply it more broadly in Canada. I have uh, just a few seconds left, but if that federal plan, that basket of goods, does not reach the targets in 2030, is it is it uh, is it effective in curbing the kinds of effects that you've described? Well, effect. we've seen in other countries that when you bring a carbon price in, um, likely because you decrease air pollution, you start to decrease some of those 7,000 premature deaths that we're starting to see. So not only... Even if it's not moving the needle forward towards those big Well, it, it will. It will. As in Alberta, you know, they've had the carbon price in place for almost a year now, and the forecast is that that's going to decrease greenhouse gas emissions there uh, related to coal by 8 megatons. So that's almost, you know, it's actually more than 1% of our total uh, greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. So, you know, assuming that they meet that, you know, Albertans can be really proud of themselves for actually being, you know, one new case study in terms of what effects we can see from this. And that reduces air pollution as well. So that's less asthma exacerbations. That's less money in the healthcare system dedicated to treating that. Okay. I'm out of time, but thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it, Dr. Howard.